What's wrong, Ramon? You losing your touch? Shoot to kill, you better hit the heart. Your own words, Ramon. The heart, Ramon. Don't forget the heart. Aim for the heart or you'll never stop. When a man with a forty-five meets a man with a rifle, you said the man with a pistol's a dead man. Let's see if that's true. I would like to relate a nice little parable. Once upon a time, there was a carpenter. You don't think a carpenter can make money, eh? No, you're wrong. This one did well because he was a builder of safes. There was a banker once who decided he must have his iron safe disguised to look like a wood cabinet. To get it made, the banker goes to our carpenter for the job. And one day, as destiny has it, the carpenter's in El Paso. He happens to walk into the bank there. And what does he find? The cabinet. Since he'd worked on the cabinet, he spotted it right away. From that day on, he couldn't work anymore. Pity, because there was something he had to do. It was this crazy idea to put his hands on the money inside. Get in there and grab all the money. You think that carpenter was lucky the way things work out? That he was lucky to go in just that bank? His good fortune stopped that day. Because later, as a prisoner, he ran into me. If you shoot me, you won't see a cent of that money. Why? Because there's nothing in there. You thought I'd trust you? Thousand dollars is a lot of money. We're gonna have to earn it. Ah, uh, write the name on the bottom of this stone. A, B. And it's headphones steel! Headphones What's up guys and welcome back to another movie trilogy review and in this case it's going to be the Man With No Name trilogy in the form of A Fistful of Dollars for a few dollars more and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. So I do remember watching the films a few years ago and in general enjoying them um, and being happy that I was finally able to catch up on the films. And I didn't think originally too much of the first and second films but thought the third one was pretty good. But I thought I would re-watch them now, and I think that I watched them originally individually um, from various sources, so I didn't really have any particular connection among them. So I decided to watch them now, since they're all streaming on HBO Max, and see how they hold up as a pure trilogy of films, all starring Clint Eastwood as the man with no name, even though in the first two films he's given um, separate names. So. Overall, the trilogy is good if you think of um, Clint Eastwood's character getting into three separate individual situations, even though the second and third film are more sequels between each other and, um, after the events of the first one, rather than being a pure trilogy. So it's one of those things where the third... F I, so I will say that The Good and the Bad and the Ugly was a good film, but for me, I actually enjoyed For a Few Dollars More a lot better, just because it felt like a good film, the music was very good, the acting was very well done, and then the third kind of fell apart just because the guy who played Tuco um, as the ugly in the, in the title, um, his character didn't really fit well with the overall plot of the films. So the only thing that I really would change in the film to make it better was if they had rounded out the film or the trilogy with the original guy from the first film that um, Clint Eastwood's character gets along with as far as the two, one of the two gangs or the bandits that he teams up with. Um, I actually didn't write down his name, but I think that would have made for a better film. Um, just because they introduced a new character that didn't need to be introduced and it would have made for a more dramatic standoff at the end of the film that um, Clint Eastwood teams up with that guy from the first film because he realizes that um, Angel Eyes is the bad character and he would rather deal with the guy with the devil he knows rather than someone who is more of a... a outside element or outside factor in that trilogy of um, 
or the, the group of three people, and especially since the guy that he wants to double cross is essentially a character that or because he's trying to he's gonna team up with a guy he's already worked with before it kind of is making amends for what happened in the first film and then he realizes that angel eyes from the second film is actually a bad character and is gonna double cross him and not give him all the information so while the good the bad and the ugly is the better known of the three films for me by watching them all together that's what made me realize that um for a few dollars more was actually the better of the three films and they're all generally rated very well like above 95 percent i want to say definitely over 90 percent for all three films but in the first film in general it was not a bad film but it's kind of the initial film that sets up the character of or clint eastwood's character what he wants to do with playing side uh, two sides um, against each other, getting the whole feel of the Old West. And then the third film is kind of the culmination of the prior two films, and you're going to have a symbolic three-way dispute between Clint Eastwood, the um, comedic element, and then the evil character that he's going to fight against, and then playing sides against each other. So um that was okay but then for a few dollars more for me like i said generally just work with the team up with him and angel eyes the how good angel eyes is versus clint eastwood and how they're both good in their own um elements and how they're gonna play people against each other so when you're watching the films in general it works as a good progression in that order but i want to say that um, as a trilogy of films, probably watching A Fistful of Dollars, then The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and then round it out with For A Few Dollars More might work better as a trilogy of films just because you set up that conflict between Clint Eastwood's character and Angel Eyes, and then you realize it makes for a more dramatic um, switch when in for a few dollars more they're working against each other and then now all of a sudden they have to team up and they end up splitting the money so one of those things where that kind of works and that kind of that also overlooks the idea that they end up kill that Clint Eastwood's character ends up killing Angel Eyes at the end of the good the bad and the ugly so that really wouldn't work unless you ignore that scene but um, in general, all good films, and I would recommend watching them all, but my original thought that The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly was the best film just because it's, it was the best film, it kind of changed, or my perspective has changed just because that film is the better known of the three films, even though they're all known, but as far as the best um, produced store, um auditorially appealing and all of that for me goes to a for, um, for a few dollars more especially since the uh, wah 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 sound that they have in the good the bad and the ugly feels like it's overplayed um, they do have a few other tracks in there but that's the one that you hear the most in the film in for a few dollars more you do have that um, musical timepiece throughout the film at various levels and speeds and things like that but there are a few other themes that also stand out when you're listening to the film so it has a little bit more variety in the film and then A Fistful of Dollars is gen I think it has some music but nothing really stood out to me and it was more generally of a quiet film which they also present in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly so for me, that's kind of what did it for me as far as making for a few dollars more the better of the three films is that they mixed the silent elements with a very good soundtrack. So the so it made it that much better. And then the, they kind of had the better storyline of or the best storyline of the three films. So while that might be a little bit controversial in general, for me, um, that's kind of that's my opinion of it that for a few dollars more is the better of the three films so when you're watching the trilogy it's gonna stand out that it makes this is to me it stood out that it's a good film just generally everything worked together and it, as far as sequels go they did a very good job having a good sequel and then for the third one it wasn't a it's not a bad film by any means it is good but 
for me, I'd probably place it second in the trilogy of films with A Fistful of Dollars being the least of the three, just because, I mean, it's the first film, so you don't quite have your footing. The second one is, it has a lot of different things going on, a lot of story and a lot of interactions, and it does require you to see it for A Fistful of Dollars, so you care about Angel Eyes, you can have more of a history with Clint Eastwood's character, but... The second film, for a few dollars more, generally just works. Um, um, if you watch the movie on its own or in the trilogy, as a good film. So that's all there is for this particular uh, review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, which film is your favorite of the three, or do you not like any of them? Do you think that the first one's the best and the second one's the worst or anything like that? Then you can comment on this post on Twitter at twitter.com slash PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next time.